This is Danny Lewis here, course developer and tutor at Point Blank Online. And I've got a little preview here of the kind of content that you can expect on the Logic Dubstep course. So I've got myself a beat here. This is actually contained in a folder, so I'm gonna unpack that. We can see here that there's a MIDI region which is triggering the ultra beat. I'll show you the timing data for that. And the sounds in the ultra beat, just plainly and simply, kick, snare, maraca, and hi-hat being used. So that's the main backbeat with some effects on top as well, a smashing glass effect over here, a whoosh here, and then we've also got a little vocal with a tape delay. In terms of the mix, let me show you what's going on. I've got a separate output for my snare. That's over here. The snare is running through an enveloper for just a little bit more energy on there. I'm gonna bypass that for you now. There is a send running through to an instance of the Space Designer. Let me take the Space Designer off. So you can hear how bare that is on its own. The Space Designer is running with a moving space impulse. So we've got a nice, interesting texture going on. So let's double click to go back up. And this video is gonna focus on using the ES2 to create the real cliched classic wobble sound. A lot of people are gonna be turning to third party synths for this, but the ES2 is very capable. We are featuring some third party synths on the course as well, but I really wanna focus on a Logic Instrument here to show you how you can get a credible dubstep sound out of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load up an instance of the ES2, gonna click on the plus up here. And I'm gonna click create with software instrument selected. I'm gonna come down to here and select ES2 stereo. Now, the default preset is something that I don't wanna hear. I'm gonna play it for you now. For me, that's got too many parameters that have been set by someone else. I wanna literally wipe the slate clean and start from scratch. So I'm gonna come up to the setting menu, drop all the way down to tutorial settings, and then up to analog saw initialized. So all we have now is a sawtooth. And some real basic modulation settings on the modulation router here. Now, we like to teach you stuff at Point Blank, so as well as showing you the wobble stuff, I'm gonna just explain a little bit about the theory that's going on behind this. I'm gonna open up a channel EQ, gonna turn the analyzer on, and then we're gonna go to resolution high. So the sawtooth is a buzzy sound. You can see here on the spectral analysis, we've got energy represented from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz over here on the horizontal scale. And you can see here the frequency energy that the sawtooth is taking up. If I change the notes, we're going higher in pitch, so it's going higher in frequency. Now the dubstep wobble kind of flavor is coming generally from a low pass filter, which is over here on filter two. I'm gonna use my mouse to move the frequencies up and down on the low pass filter here. So have a look what happens. As I come down, you can hear the high frequencies are being taken away and you can see on the analyzer as well, they're being taken away visually. Basically modulation of the cutoff frequency. So I'm doing that by hand at the moment. And what we wanna do is to take away that sort of hand control and get it so it happens automatically. So that means that we would assign an LFO to it, a low frequency oscillator. And it's literally gonna remote control that parameter for me. So I'm gonna use LFO2. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it has tempo synchronization on the lower scale. So you can see a point here. If I go above that, it's represented in Hertz. If I go below, you can see different grid sizes. So that's gonna be great. That's the kind of stuff that we want. Now, in order for LFO2 to work, it needs to be set as a source along the modulation routers here. So I'm gonna set a target over here of the cutoff two, and I'm gonna set the source to LFO2. Now I can adjust the amount it's gonna be affecting the cutoff by this slider here. So look, have a listen. So this is now moving up and down automatically without me having to do anything. So if you imagine behind the scenes, someone's taking this and moving it up and down. Let me take it to the highest value here. So we've got a nice strong buzzy sound at the beginning, but then it's being modulated afterwards. Go to the maximum amount here. This is like the depth of the modulation. So I can bring this down back to normal. 
So we're taking this to maximum so that we really hear that movement guy on. So that's your cliched dubstep wobble. So we're gonna look at something else. And what it is, is up here on oscillator one, I'm gonna change the actual waveform type from the sawtooth down to the sine, and then I'm gonna do something different, which is to right click on that sine and choose one of these digi waves. So these are expanding the sonic palette beyond the traditional waveforms. You know, your traditional analog synth will have the pulse wave, the sawtooth, the triangle, and the sine. But on the ES2, we've got the ability to choose these digi waves, which are similar to the wavetables on Massive, we can actually choose these to add some extra character. So let's have a look. Let's pick one of these at random. So the ring sound. Listen to that. Already it's got a nice, interesting extra dimension to it. There's a big range of these. Once you've actually selected one of them, you can actually then click on the mouse and move it up or down. And what I'm also going to do is add some distortion here. I'm going to take this up, I'm going to add some extra energy to it. We're going to go to the hard mode. We're going to set the actual tone to bright. So you can really start to feel that dubstep -y kind of vibe coming through. What I want to do though is add another layer to the sound. So I'm going to turn on oscillator two. I'm going to bring this down to sine. I'm going to take the second oscillator 12 semitones lower. And what I also need to do is to move the actual mix control so that we can hear equal amounts of both. We've now got a really solid bottom end with the grimy, buzzy textures on the mids and the highs. So we're definitely covering that bro steppy kind of flavor. So let's record something in and see how it sounds. And then we can actually get in and change the LFO rate to add some variety. So I'm gonna come down here, let's push record. Let me just quantize this. Let's take the analyzer out of the way. Now we don't need it. Just gonna come up here to the left-hand side. And it's a very, very simple rhythm I was playing in there. So eights should be perfect. So let's have a think now about doing the manipulation of the LFO. I'll do it by hand here. And on the course itself, we'll be covering how you can actually put that into the sequencer and record the changes and tidy it up using automation and also apply MIDI controllers to actually get a hands-on vibe with that. We're covering a wide variety of different styles that fit under the umbrella of dubstep. So it's a great way for you to broaden your experience of a, a wide variety of techniques and then to actually form your own sound, your own unique flavor through the learning of the other styles.